Well, I'm sure you or someone you know is dealing with a stuffy nose right now. It is that time of year and Abby Mackey joins us now with an eye on your health to talk about sinusitis or sinus infection. And Abby's a registered nurse, a writer for the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Thanks for joining us. Great to be back, Christine. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. OK, so why is fall? Why is right now the time when we're seeing so many of these? Right, so lots of fun fall things, <laughs> apple cider, hay rides, but it's also cold and flu season and fall allergy season. And those conditions happen to be the most likely predecessors to sinusitis. But we know sinusitis doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. About 80% of the time, it starts with a cold or a flu, which is why now is also sinusitis season. Okay, now a lot of people have a hard time telling, is it a sin you know, sinus infection or is it just a cold like you're talking about? How right. do you know? How do doctors even know? Well, the magic potion here is the amount of time. So in the vast majority of cases, it's a 10 day period of being stuffy, having a sore throat, having a cough, which is why this is so frustrating for patients. But most medical practitioners are going to adhere to that. There are a few exceptions, but don't expect to have an antibiotic prescription called in unless you've reached that 10 day period. Okay, so sometimes it's really just, you're gonna have to wait it out till then and then see the doctor. Exactly. And so if you do find out you have it, can antibiotics treat it? That is the idea. There is some debates over that, especially when it comes to adults. My story on Sunday is particularly about children. And when it comes to children, we're always a little more careful. We're always a little more cautious. So in those cases where children seem to have a sinus infection, more often than not, they are going to treat it. Okay, and we're always hearing about what's the color of what's coming out on your of your nose. Does that make a difference? It actually doesn't. Uh, so this is not a new idea, but Dr. Nader Shake, a pediatrician from UPMC Children's Hospital in Bloomfield, recently did a study with a bunch of colleagues about sinusitis, and that's one of the things they looked at. So they sort of reconfirmed the idea that no need to raise the alarm bells just because when you blow your nose, it's yellow or green. <laughs> All right, and I know he's also looking into a better way to detect it, because I mean, right now we really don't have a great way, like you said. Right, and so it's frustrating for practitioners too, because he says things like, when I try to look at an ear infection, I can physically see it. When I'm gonna diagnose pneumonia, I can hear it through my stethoscope. Mm -hmm. I don't have a tool like that for sinusitis. Mm -hmm. So he and those colleagues are looking into an actual lab test for sinusitis, which hopefully will tamp down any frustration on the parts of patients or the practitioners. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. All right, well, let's talk about prevention because mm -hmm. the <laughs> best thing would be not to get one at all. So what can we do to try and avoid it? Right, so knowing that about 80% of the time it's a cold or a flu that comes before your sinus infection, mm -hmm. it does make good sense to just avoid that cold or flu in the first place. So the old and good, you know, advice of hand washing, stay away from people who are sick, don't share a cup, things like that. But also if or when you get sick this season, it would be a good idea to note when your symptoms start. So if you get into a position where you feel like you need to go and see your doctor or nurse practitioner, or you need to take your child to see the pediatrician, you can tell that practitioner a really good and accurate story about when your symptoms started, which will really help everybody. Yeah, that's a great idea because I know they always ask and I'm always thinking, <laughs> when was that? Okay, I'm gonna write it down next time. Exactly. Thank you for the advice, of Abby. Course. And you can read a lot more from Abby in the health and wellness section sponsored by UPMC. It's this story is online now. It'll also be in Sunday's Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Kim